Bobby, Jack Monty's neighbor, who cut down a hickory tree and provided us with all those staves that we split, we promised him a bow. So this is Bobby's bow, 72 inches. He's got like a 31 inch draw. He's got a long draw that I measured. So um, this is gonna be his bow. We got, I heated it up with a heat gun on the back set jig. I actually have a board in the garage. I'm gonna make a new back set jig just for fire hardening this. And I figure if I make it for 72 inches, um, then we could put anything on it, you know, 72 or even shorter to work. So that's the goal for tomorrow. Let's take that two by six or two by eight, whatever it is I got in the garage and make a new back set jig for fire hardening. Well, this is Bobby's bow coming along. So there's a little spring back. I'm going to flip it around. I got to do the other side, but I always heat treat with a heat gun, these green staves before I fire harden them because it removes a lot of the moisture and for the most part it takes out any twist. But once you uh, put it on a jig to be fire hardened, um, that heat makes everything more permanent, straightness and back set. Okay, I like to keep myself busy, but I had a really busy day today. Okay, I have a bow inside that's, I rawhide backed and it's drying and uh, maybe tomorrow we'll trim it and that's a hickory board bow with rawhide backing. And uh, you see that bow that's gonna be fire hardened tomorrow on the new back set jig that I made today. I made how to make a bigger one. And now that one will fit 72 inch bows or shorter. So I figured let me make it bigger and I can put bigger or smaller bows on there. All right, and you'll have the old one for uh, yeah, that served me well. That's gonna be a backup. And uh, look, from heat treating that hickory uh, bow that, uh, that stayed, from heat treating it and shaping it, it's got a little back set. But after I cook it, and hopefully we'll have to check the weather. I don't know what it is tomorrow. But if it's going to be good, that's getting fire hardened on a new jig tomorrow. Okay, if all goes well tomorrow, it's all set up. Be cooking hickory tomorrow. Let's... Good morning. I got my new 72-inch uh, back set jig that I made yesterday. And this bow that's on here is a mutual friend, Jack Monty's neighbor, originally gave us a big log, big hickory log, and we split it into staves. We got about 10 staves out of it, of which I made a bunch of bows. Uh, Jack's got a couple of bows coming his way, and uh, we have a few friends that, were, that the bows, uh, that the staves are have their names on, they're gonna be making bows. Okay, so this 72 inch jig, we could use shorter bows, longer bows, it really don't matter, it's where we put the charcoal. And on the end of this one here, so we don't waste a lot of charcoal in my gutter, we crumbled up a little more tin foil here to raise it, so you're not raising it with charcoal, you're raising it with tin foil and putting the charcoal on top. So I want you to give you a look at it and uh, we're gonna light this, we'll take, remove this, get it cooking good. And this is going for two and a half hours. So it's about 10 after 10, you know, so maybe like 10.30 or so will be a start time. But looking good, right? And another friend that you saw make a nice, beautiful bow, Chris Bartek, he says, I gotta drop something off to you tomorrow. He's got some horn beam from his property. And you'll be seeing us making bows with that horn beam and fire hardening them and seeing how they shoot and shape. All right, and I left this big blocky thing like this, but before I tiller it, we're gonna make nice transitions before I tiller it, but I just left it for now to cook it. Okay, while the one bow is cooking, this is my hickory board bow, my left-handed hickory board bow that I made the other day that I rawhide back. And I just want to show you quick, we got ourselves a box cutter. And all we're going to do is we slide the blade down flat and kind of into it a little bit. We try not to lift any grains so we have a sharp blade and go nice and slow. And if they're ever caught, you go back the other way. Okay, like that. See how nice. 
and look how nice of a clean edge you get, okay? And then once we've got this trimmed, we're gonna sand it nice and round. And the next step will be tomorrow, probably, we'll be tillering this bow and that. Save your empty coal bags for after the coals go out the next day, you can clean up. And also, when I was trimming this rawhide backing, I trimmed it so the sh shavings would land on a chair and swept them off of the chair into the bag. So you save that for a trash bag. And I just want to show you how nice, this is just rough trimmed. I just slide it along. It's got a little trimming to go and sanding. But look how nice this rawhide backing is. Okay, it's not wrapped. It's just laid on the bow, squeegeed. And my hand is used to like just smooth it down too after the squeegee to make sure it's shaping all the contours so there's no lines and it comes out great. And just so you know, I've done this a few times and I'm new to this bow making stuff since December. But if you ever had for any reason wrapped or unwrapped or whatever, you ever had some of this like lift up, you just wet it again let it get, you know, just actually put a little water on it, get it wet, pe you know, peel it up or take a, a toothpick and put more type on three right under it, smooth it down. And you could put like a clip, like, you know, like a potato chip bag clip or something on there just to hold it down and uh, wait another day and you're good to go. But uh, usually don't happen. I had it happen like once or twice where it just, just needed to be a little wet to be, uh, to be manipulated, a little glue, clamped it, and the bow's fine. I'm shooting that bow today, it's fine. So look, see? You know, you take the razor knife, you cut down, follow the profiles, you do your best you can around these edges because it's all gonna be sanded nice, okay? So anyway, this is gonna be, this is a 70 inch board bow, and we're gonna try and tiller it nice uh, for a 29 to 30 inch drawer at 30 pounds only. Okay, we got it cooking. I put some more coals on the ends to raise it up a little bit more. We got a 10.30 start time. Kind of weird, most of my start times are 10.30, but I'm not a morning person. I'm up late at night, and uh, 10.30 seems to be the starting time on most of my uh, bow cooks. So here we go, we're gonna just keep an eye on it, let it go low and slow. And we got a few hours, we got nothing to do today. This is this is what we're doing today. Okay, it's 10 after 11, it's been going for 40 minutes. I'm gonna lift it up, take a good look at it. Okay. So I'm going to get a nice color all around. Let me show you on the video. Okay, if you can see, we're starting to get a nice color. Okay. It's been going for 40 minutes, and I'm going to get the stick. I'm going to knock some of these coals off, and I'm going to rearrange the coals to where there's some, where it needs to be higher, or lower, okay? Okay, we added coals, you see it's smoking every half hour, 40 minutes or so, you gotta knock the ashes off the old coals, you throw new coals on, and then you gotta keep an eye on it, all right? This may be a little lower, I'm not sure, we'll keep an eye on it, it's cooking nice. Like I said, we have all day, we could cook it a little longer if need be, and uh, we're just gonna let it go. I also checked all the clamps, and what I did this time was I moved them just a little bit where it needs to be, and they, they were a little loose. They had to be tightened up, so I figured I'd move them. So some of the spots that were covered by the clamp will get a chance to get uh, colored. Really, the whole bow's getting heat treated all around the clamps and everything. You don't have to do that, but I figured I'd add a little color to the white spot. It's 11.35. We start at 10.30, so... It's an hour and 15 minutes. I just want to show you, we've got some nice slight color going on here. Okay. Okay, slow and low cook. Okay. Gonna add some more coals down this end. And where it's darker here, I'm gonna knock some coals around over here to compensate. 
once again, these fireplace gloves are a must for safety. So what I did was I looked on the bottom, it's a little more brown here. I moved the little coals around so there would be less coals in this area. And I looked where it was a little light, which was on the end. I added a couple of coals there. And then we're gonna put it on and cook for however long it takes for me to get that nice dark brown color that I like on these cooks. Okay. Okay, I brought the tape measure out. I'm going to give you some measurements. See if I have it in my pocket. Okay, just so you know what we got going on here. Once again, we got about five inches, which seems to be like the standard, like I got going. Five inches. Like five inches here. Four and a half as it gets a little closer. That's probably why it was a little, a little darker over here. It was probably because it's four and a half inches there instead of the five foot poles. Okay. So let's see. Closest to that five inch mark, okay? Let's see what we got over here. We got close to the five, four and three quarter. Okay. Got four and three quarter over here. Five inches. Five inches. Five inches. We got five inches all around. The other thing I'm going to tell you is after you do that, you saw I just let it retract. Don't touch the tape measure. It's hot. Okay. So there we go. What time we got again now? We got 1140. We're going to let it go for at least a half hour. But I'm going to be watching it because while I'm cooking this bow, I'm tilling a rawhide backed uh, hickory board bow that I'm doing. And I'm doing two projects at once today. It's 1210. I raised it up to take a look. I'm going to switch it around and show you the side. This side over here has to be a little lower. This side's cooking a little more. And uh, let me show you, Al. Okay, we got nice color on this limb, right? And then over here, though we do have color, it's not as much. So we're going to put this side a little lower than we did the other side. Okay, we got that side a little lower to cook a little more. Those clamps I retightened for the second time. And now we have to just watch it. Put a couple of coals here or there, but we're at the end game now. Um, we start at 1030 and it's quarter after 12. You know, we're, we're going to let it go a little longer. This may be like a three hour deal because I had a little higher and took it a little slower. Okay, we're at that two hour mark. And what I'm going to do is uh, raise it. We're going to check it and see we may have to angle it and do the sides a little bit more. Okay. Okay, if you look at this limb here, it's got a nice color going down all the way down. And it's at the two hour mark. And this one here, we can go a little more. So we're going to put it on, put it back down, and we're going to go a little more. Okay, we're going to let that side cook a little bit more and uh, we're going to let that center handle cook a little too. Just going to keep an eye on it. I worked really hard these past few days. This is a hickory rawhide back bow that uh, was a board bow made and I shaped the handle it's for a friend that's a lefty only pulls back uh, he only wants to pull back 30 pounds and it's around 32 now and uh, the deal is I'm going to shoot a, going to serve it and I'll probably shoot a few arrows through it and then uh, I'll check the tiller again and uh, if there's got to be if it's a little off I may sand it I'll just sand it to finish it and uh, recheck the tiller you know sanding but it, it's bending really nice and this goes back to his 29 inches. So I think it came out really good, really awesome. It's gonna hold up, and the thing is, if 
somebody, he's 29, if one of his friends with these long draw lengths pull it back to 30, it should be okay. It shouldn't break. Now, over here, what we have over here is our friend Bobby, a mutual friend. This is my Jack Monty's neighbor, gave us all that hickory wood that we, we went through, by the way. We went through all the stage. They, they're labeled with names of people to make the bows out of. But uh, here's Bobby's bow, Bobby's bow out of his tree. And look, look at the back set. Okay, look at the back set on this, right? From a back set jig from fire hardening. Okay, let me show you close. Okay. And he's going, he's not a hunter. He's just going to use this for target. And anything around the 40 pound weight is going to be good for him. So we're going to let it go in the house and going to let the moisture seek its level, so to speak. And uh, then at some point we're going to... Uh, I'm going to shape the fade outs a little bit before I start tillering it and uh, put string grooves in. And we're going to try and get it down to like a manageable 45 pound weight. He's got a 31 inch draw. This guy's got long arms. So uh, we've got to get this to 31 inches and a lower weight for target shooting. So this will be a little bit of work too. And uh, careful tillering to get it to that point hopefully it works out and uh, no uh, lips or damages all right more to come busy few days